Hello, good morning, good evening, everyone. Um, here in Japan, it's quite early, so I'm, I'm having my coffee, coffee ready and drinking it permanently. Um, about KDE, plasma in Debian, um, as I wrote also in the abstract, it's not only a talk about the state of KDE plasma in Debian, but also of how I arrived there, um, because it was quite long a journey. So let's start where it's good. It's, re it's, it's really good, so we can finish the talk here. Well, it's more or less, right? There is one small point we have to take care. I'll come to this later. So what is KDE Plasma? It's a lot. Um, so within our team, we will discuss later, we have about 400 packages at least. So that consists of Qt, the whole Qt library system, which is about currently 46 packages. Um, the frameworks, KD frameworks, uh, very basic libraries for C++, uh, C++ programming using Qt. Uh, these are at the moment 83 libraries. Uh, then there's Plasma, the actual desktop environment that builds on top of the frameworks and of Qt, of course. There are about 51 packages, um, well, like Plasma Discover or the desktop public, also application itself. And then there's KDE Gears that just got renamed very recently. It was called KDE, KDE Applications for a long time. This is about 200 and more applications. Uh, all the stuff you normally use daily. This is like Dolphin or Kate or KDE and Live or, well, there are so many to listen, I don't know. So all of these are more or less maintained by the, by the same group. So that is, well, as I said, about 400 packages that we try to keep up to date for, for the desktop. So looking at how does uh, KDE and, and Plasma uh, got released over the, the last at least two releases. Um, Basta, Basta was released in 2019 uh, June and had uh, rather at that time uh, up to, well, the level of, of Plasma and, and KDA was quite good. So you see here on the in the columns, the releases of QT frameworks, apps or gears and Plasma uh, available in Pasta, Balsai and currently in Unstable and when they were re released. So you see that the apps gears was a bit late, uh, a bit so well in uh, in Basta, but both the frameworks and the Plasma desktop itself was, well, as new as you can do uh, due to the freeze. The same happened with, in Bullseye again. So we have uh, the QT 515 and frameworks 578. Uh, App Gears was 2012 uh, because, well, the new release was in 21.4, which was definitely too late to go, go into the freeze. And Plasma 520, which was released in 21 in this January, that was very close to the to the real, uh, freeze for start of Bullseye, so we couldn't get um, Plasma 521 into Bullseye. Um, it was ready; we had it here, but um, it was still like not released in beta, so we couldn't put it in Bullseye. Debian Unstable, the seed repository nowadays has more or less the newest stuff. It's like uh, the Frameworks 583 that was released in June. Uh, the latest apps gears I just uploaded like a week ago. Uh, this was just released this last month, uh, this month actually. And Plasma 521, the latest point release. We have 522 ready since um, one month, two months now. Unfortunately, it's hanging in the in new for now. I don't know how many months. Um, so as long as soon as as deep as all these new packages are processed, hopefully we will have uh, Plasma 522 and probably Plasma 523 already in unstable very, rather soon. Everything is ready. So how, what are the teams working on this? So this is mostly, there are two teams. This is the Debian QT KDE maintainers team. There are two sets of packages. This is the QT packages. This is, these are mo maintained mostly, no, not mostly, actually by Dmitri and Lisandro. Um, they're doing incredible work with the, uh, with the QT libraries because this is really difficult to package. Um, I'm, I'm, 
uh, I have to say I have I have touched all parts of the whole key deep plasma besides the QT packages because um, I'm, I'm a bit scared and they help uh, also a lot with C++ problems. And then the rest, all the stuff I mentioned before, frameworks, apps, and and Plasma. So there's, I would say, cur the current team consists of Sandro, Pino, Patrick, Oriel, and myself. Uh, those are the the people who regularly commit to the to the Git repositories, upload the stuff, and so this is the, these are teams. There are several others. Um, in the last in the last rounds of uploads, we have cleaned up the uploaders because they were lots of people who have contributed thanks to them for a long time or for short time but haven't been active or even missing in action for quite some time i also highlight those three in red because they actually joined last year so that is that is a very nice development so patrick Oriel, and myself we, we more or less joined the db and critique ID teams recently well joined and the, we are also the three are taking over most of the, the work currently in the frameworks apps and plasma, not in the QT, but in the frameworks apps and plasma. So I, I think that was a very nice development uh, over the last year. Uh, there's another team which is called Debian KDA Extras. This collects, well, pro programs that are not released by the KD KDE plasma team, so not uh that officially but are related to kda so typical packages are sddm the display manager or krita there are again lots of them they are maintained by a variety of people also the variety level of activity so we now and then put our hands there try to fix stuff um i'm trying to to don't get involved too much because then it's already 400 packages so I, it's getting too many of them uh, but for bug fixes and, and some, some other stuff, I sometimes wander off into the extra. So what are the problem areas we are facing? This is very typical. So the one is dependency hell. So upstream just simply expects that everything is upgraded on the same level and the latest. And that is not what works. And much more. Uh, Debian supports partial upgrades, and that makes it really difficult. We see this just now in the uh, testing transition where there are some incompatibilities we even didn't know they exist um, between old frameworks and new frameworks. So this is really a hard problem. We discussed this over the last months, how, how to deal, how to force, for example, all libraries of the frameworks of the same level, but it is, it is not an easy uh, task. Then uh, APIs and symbols. I think everyone who has packaged for C++ knows that this is an, an eternal fight. Uh, I Personally, I don't think that using symbols files for C++ libraries is a really good idea because they are just changing too many times with slight changes of the GCC compiler or the versions or something. It happens quite often. And the AP, API package by KDA, well, framework should be API stable, but up, up, so upstream KDA upstream expects that you have all the Plasma packages in the same level and all the gears in the same and all the frameworks. That means that if there are slight changes in the API, they don't care as long outside the frameworks, as long as, well, within the same group, all the same packages of the same uh, release work together. But that is, as I said before, with partial upgrades often not realizable in Debian. Well, and then the, the, there was the not so good part. I mentioned is QT6. Unfortunately, they are, fortunately, they are good news. So Dmitry and Lisandro decided to, to, to finish their packaging work with QT5 and we won't package QT6. Um, and that was somehow left in a big hole because um, at the moment everything is fine, but within, I guess, half a year, a year, we don't know, KD Plasma will move to QT6. And then we need QT6 also packaged in Debian if you want to continue. So fortunately, Patrick, Stood, uh, stepped up uh, recently to package QT6. And as far as I see, there is uh, good progress going on. Um, I'm very happy that uh, Patrick did this because, uh, as I said before, I'm, uh, I'm a bit scared touching QT. Uh, 
uh, with all these libraries, but yeah. And uh, Twinty and Lisandro are also very helpful. They say they won't package Qt6 themselves, but they are there for helping if there are things and they are still always around. So thanks to them for, for the support. Well, then there is members who take responsibility for packages. This is something we always need. We are too few, too few for too many packages to, share, uh, to say. Um, one shot contributions are nice, as I said before, but with this huge number of packages, I mean, we have automatized most of the stuff, right? I mean, it's just not, you cannot, 400 packages, you cannot do all the, the Git commits manually because you will never finish. And then packages get outdated and very old. That was happened two and so three years ago. So we have automatized now practically everything. Uh, Patrick and me wrote uh, yeah, some automation scripts and it works. So we always look forward for new, new contributors and maintainers. Please join. So now a bit about my journey to KDE and Plasma, because that's quite an interesting topic, right? So it started to, I was a GNOME fanatic for like 20 years or something. And I, of course, switched to GNOME 3 and tried it on and off. And then the longest time was six months in ago um, until I decided no. <laughs> so I banished everything of GNOME 3 for myself and switched to Cinnamon. That was in 2019, uh, 2018, end of 2018, 2019, beginning. I packaged Cinnamon first for myself. Uh, this is, you will see also with KDE, I packaged for myself because I want to have a new version. I packaged myself. I provide it for myself in a deep end package so that I have it uh, in an apt repository that I have it available on all my computers. So in 2019, as I said, I switched to Cinnamon and packaged Cinnamon 4, but that was only like, only, it was just, I provided binaries for I, I, I386 and MT64 on my own server, but that was, that was all, that was not part of the official Cinnamon. Well, then 2019 was somehow a, a lost year for Debian, more or less. Um, then 2019-7, communicating with the then maintainers, Max, who is also was maintainer of, of KDA, of Cinnamon, um, I, I, I was granted back access to Salsa and so became maintainer, co-maintainer of Cinnamon. Since then, I was uh, maintaining Cinnamon for uh, since 2019-7 and uploaded all the version 4 packages of Cinnamon. And in 2020 beginning, I realized there's still too much GNOME lingering around on my computers. And that was, it was too disturbing because every new release of GNOME got more uh, against my usage principles. So I tried Plasma and I have to say, I was very skeptical about it because I remember from KD three or four times what a hell it was. Um, I mean, it was a huge memory monster, very slow and, and difficult. So I didn't like it back then. And I was hell of surprised how nice Plasma worked. So back then Plasma was in the post uh, buster and it was outdated. It was still the 5.17 releases. Also 5.18 was released already with several point releases. So. I realized with Debian lagging behind, I built my own packages again. Uh, it was like I took Plasma 518 and built my own packages. I first distributed them via my own server um, so that I have them available on my own computers. And uh, that worked quite nicely. In 2000, uh, so in, in last year, March, April, people started to ask me about different architectures and, and so I decided I cannot compile everything my, by hand myself. So I switched to the OpenSUSE build service, which is a great service. And since then I provided updated packages, always of the latest frameworks, apps, gears, and, and Plasma on the OBS for Debian. First only for Debian Unstable and testing, and now um, also for testing, uh, for stable testing and unstable. And then, uh, yeah, in, 2020 uh, April, um, yeah, this, since then these updates got regular. So first Plasma 5.18, then 5.19, all via the OBS. And well, first in the beginning, there were certain, well, misunderstandings with the QTKDE team. So I started, I couldn't contribute to them. And um, yeah, 
2020 in in June. To choose in June, uh, well, we had a nice reconciliation with the team and especially with with Patrick and uh, nee, <laughs> sorry guys, my daughter just interrupting. Um, and so we had a nice reconciliation and the new members of the team, as I mentioned before, we started working together uh, since June on KTN Plasma and since then uh, work uh, proceeded quite nicely. Uh, 2010, I was added to the Salsa QT KDA team, and since then, packaging work continues permanently. Um, yeah, now it's well, it was first Plasma 520 in Bullseye, 21, 22 Gears frameworks, everything updated. What is the status of OpenSUSE build services? Well, again, I still keep these services running. Um, they are always the latest version, so Framework 85 and the latest Plasma. Um, as I said, normally it's on par with Debian, but now Debian packages are hanging in use since ages, so I cannot do anything. I recently updated the OBS build service also to provide packages now for the new re stable release pools, I testing and unstable. And yeah, package versioning is always that at the end the Debian packages will override because I just use some tilde. And well, I also package some depending third party apps and this kind of stuff. These repositories on my OBS are, are, are used in several other projects. So why OBS? So sorry, backports guys, but it's much quicker and much less pain. Um, going through backports is not an option if you want to actually develop uh, packages where you have to rebuild stuff again to see dependencies and this kind of stuff. So OBS is really the perfect environment to do this. I still, even for the development of the Debian changes, I mostly rely on OBS builds to see if that works uh, properly. So what are the communication channel in case you want to join? Um, there, is, there are users and developers targeted. So the Debian uh, users list is Debian KDA at least, and there's also an IRC channel. The developers list is uh, mentioned here. There is also the IRC channel, which is quite active. So a lot of communication is going on in the IRC channel. Um, actually, most, since recent, most of the communication and discussions going on in the IRC channel. Um, so closing, I want to thank the whole team. Uh, maintaining all these packages, like I say, 400 in a group makes it much easier and packages get a high, uh, much higher quality. Uh, first of all, because more people look at it and then, uh, yeah. Then thanks to all the users and testers of the open source Beastly service, because they, they, are, they give very important feedback uh, often on the packaging, on problems with the upgrades. So they improve not only the OBS packages, but also the Debian packages, because these changes come back to, to the Debian packages, of course. And last but not least, of course, thanks to the absolutely great upstream developers who are providing uh, incredible packages. Well, and last but not least, if you want to join, we are always looking forward. Please come over to the dark side. We have nice cookies. Okay. Thanks everyone for your attention. All right, thank you for the talk. We've got about one minute left and two questions in the pad. Do you have it open or do you want me to oh, read the questions well, out for you? Uh, yes, read, sorry, don't have to, the, I opened the pad now, but if you can open, uh, read the first one already. All right, uh, the first one is, when was QT6 released and would it be included in KDE6? or will it be put in KDE 5? And when is this anticipated to happen? So QT 6, when it was released, I don't know. Um, it is not, will not be included in KDE 6. It is independent. It's, in, it's also independently developed. KDE 6 will be based on QT 6. So KDE 6 will require the QT 6 libraries. I'm not sure whether there are timelines for this. Upstream is working on uh, KD6 and, and supporting QT6. And, and, but I don't know when this will happen. Okay, what changes we could make into Debian to make it as easy as OBS for soft releases? I, I, I don't know. I think things like the, uh, like Ubuntu has would be, it's hard to say. There are, there are 
there is a service, Debian, I don't know what something, Fabio used it to build packages, test packages, including uh, their own dependencies so that you have uh, dependency reliance. Um, services like this exist. I think the best would be to to have an OBS instance for Debian where people can actually and adjust maybe OBS to better support Debian. I mean, this it's already very good, but I think that would be be better. I don't think that this will be possible from the principle for Debian, so mainline that we can uh, use uh, this role. Well, ro I, I don't discuss rolling Debian. That's that's not my topic. What motivates you to continue update KDE Plasma? Uh, well, I just want stuff that works and and relatively new stuff. And also, once I took responsibility of something, I I, I continue packaging it until I declare that I don't do it anymore, like I did with Cinnamon. Um, and as I said, it it becomes easier. Uh, since time now, since we have automatized more, much, many of the steps necessary. So, and in combination with the OBS, I just run the, the automated update scripts, send everything to OBS, and then I'll have to only look at the breakage. Of course, there is breakage, but for example, with the KD gears, with 200 plus packages at the end, I have to check five to 10 packages which broke. Uh, and that is a reasonable amount of work. So that is not something we can do. All right, that's all the time we have. Thank you for giving the talk. Okay, thanks a lot, everyone, and have a nice evening over where you are.